He was America's prince, she a blue collar kid. John F. Kennedy Jr. and Rosemarie Terenzio. You probably haven't heard about the two of them, but they were at work together every day and few relationships meant more to John. Now, so many years after his death, Rosemarie has written a book about their magical friendship. Fairy tale interrupted. In the mid-1990s, John F. Kennedy Jr. was arguably the most famous celebrity on the planet. Everything is wonderful. Thank you. Behind the scenes at that time was an unlikely close friend and confidant, Rosemarie Terenzio. A girl from the Bronx, stressed economic background, meets John F. Kennedy Jr., the most famous person in the world. What was it like where you grew up? Italian families, two family houses. Most people had tons of kids, not a lot of money. My parents usually each worked two jobs. Sometimes my dad had three. Rosemary has now written a book about her surprising inner circle relationship with John Kennedy. But I think that because we got along really well, we understood each other's sense of humor, and we valued loyalty, it worked. As his personal assistant, she was the last line of defense between John and the legions of people clamoring every day for his attention. Many big names themselves. The Oprah Winfrey's of the world, the Barbara Walters of the world, people wanting access to John. The president of the United States. Calling because they want access and they have to go through you. Where did you get the gumption to say no to powerful people? Well, you say no when you know he wants you to say no. These are big time people. Not bigger than him. <laughs> Not bigger than him. Rosemary was working side by side every day with the world's most adored bachelor, but claims she was never romantically attracted to him. You were supposed to be gaga, bowled over, and chasing after him. That's what women do when they met John Kennedy. You somehow immune. How? I, it's not that I didn't think he was attractive. I did. Absolutely. No, no. A Labrador is attractive. No, they're this not. This is they're John cute. Kennedy. I was attracted to him. But it's he's not, still good looking. But he's, he's attractive. He's gorgeous. But to me, he was a political type. He wasn't a sexy type to me. It isn't politics as usual. Turns out they were working on a project designed to unite the sexy and the political. A magazine named George, after the first president. The magazine was kind of the print version of him. It was sexy politics, I think so. cool politics. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he felt if you engaged people in the political process, they would find it as fascinating as celebrities. At the same time the magazine was about to launch, John married girlfriend Carolyn Bissett, and Rosemary became close to her, too. I was probably both of their confidant at that point. Excuse me. Watch your back, please. One thing Carolyn confided in Rosemary was her fear and loathing of the paparazzi, a complaint John was tired of hearing. It made him angry, so he would say to her, oh, big deal, so what, get on with it. And sometimes that was hurtful. In fact, in her book, Terenzio writes that John's insensitivity was the biggest catalyst for their arguments. And the meaner the press coverage got, the more Carolyn retreated into herself. The process was heartbreaking to witness. By mid-July in 1999, Carolyn was threatening not to attend a family wedding in Hyannis, the wedding that would lead to their fateful journey. You had to talk to Carolyn about making the case that she should go. She should fly up with John. She should do the right thing. I did. So you talked to her and she saw the sense of it. She did. Unfortunately, she did. But I'll always question whether I should have just kept my mouth shut and not let her get on that plane. If she didn't go, she'd be alive. Updating you now on the breaking news that we've been following all morning long. John F. Kennedy Jr. Uh, taking off in a small single engine plane late last night. As people around the country watched, the plane John was flying with Carolyn and her sister Lauren on board disappeared. When a massive search effort led to the discovery of their bodies, the story came to its tragic conclusion for most people. For Rosemary Terenzio, it would take a while longer. When do you realize he's not coming home? The day that I left his apartment for the last time after I packed it up. You had to do all that? Mm hmm That's hard. It was really hard. What did we lose when we lost him? We lost one of those people who, there was a, 
a care. There was a, I felt like, I always felt like there was something about John being around that made people behave better. I think people behaved better when John was in the world. <laughs>